Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Lisa Gothel, the Artistic Director of Boston Jewish Film, and thank you for sticking around for this conversation. I'm so excited to have with Natalia Senelnikova, um, the writer and director of this amazing film. Welcome, Natalia. It is 4.30 in the morning for Natalia, and I told you earlier I have to take you to dinner as a thank you for this. Thank you for joining us for your Q&A. Thank you. I'm very excited. Like, as I said before, that now and on the other side of the world, you saw my film. So this is very exciting for me. Thank you for coming. As you know, um, I saw your film at its world premiere at the Tribeca Film Festival in June and had this serendipitous meeting with your producer in another film. And from the moment I saw this film, I knew I wanted to bring it to our festival. Um, so I should also say welcome to the, the Boston Jewish Film Festival from Berlin. Um, so Natalia, I just want to tell people a little bit about you. Um, Natalia was born in St. Petersburg in 1989 and emigrated to Germany at the age of seven. And in 2013, you graduated from Hildesheim University with a bachelor in cultural studies with the major film of studies for you being photography and theater. Since October, 2013, she's been studying film directing at the Film University Babelsberg Conrad Wolf, which is a long name in Potsdam. Her graduation film, which is a short film, Weeping Willows, premiered at the Moscow Jewish Film Festival and was screened in various international film festivals. Natalia is a member of the Jewish Artist Network, Dagesh, which I should ask you about later. And We Might As Well Be Dead, this is so hard for me to believe, is her feature debut. Welcome again, Natalia, and congratulations on this masterwork of a film. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. So I just want to congratulate you on a completely gripping and fascinating and unique allegorical and gender bending film that had me transfixed. I was at the edge of my seat the moment I saw it and it's happened again today. Um, I want to congratulate you on your film being shortlisted as one of Germany's Oscar submissions this year and on the fact that you wrote this as your graduate thesis film. Um, it's such an accomplished first feature. So you're a Russian Jewish emigrate to Berlin. And I would imagine that those experiences like helped inspire the screenplay and your direction of We Might As Well Be Dead. Your film feels like it speaks to what it's like to be an outsider and what happens when scapegoating and marginalizing and fear and lies large and small take root and can lead to this distrust and violence and exclusion, which is kind of like what's happening a lot in our world now, to be honest. Um, so I'm curious if you want to speak to that, like how your personal experiences might have led into the writing of this film. Um, yeah, I think you you really um, sum, up, sum up the film really well. Um, I think like all our experience, like when we work, they they make their, their way into, into the yeah, into the art. So of course, my experiences being like a Russian Jewish immigrant in Germany were a part of it, but like not only it was, it's not an autobiographical story. It's more like what I observed or more how I see the world. And yeah, being in the same time inside and outside of a society where I think something also reason to make films or to start making films because you have this, uh, the, the way you observe things. So Yes, this was this was a part, but I think mainly we wanted to make a film and to show how fear, um, yeah, how fear changes like a society, and also like uh, how fear um, shows what's underneath, like the 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 social dyna dynamics, um, um, when people are in fear, like how what's like then the curtain is raised and you see behind behind the curtain. That was something we were like really interested in and something also that developed as we were writing with my co-writer Victor Galandi we were just like realizing more and more in the writing process that this is something we, we want to tell so it was not from the beginning oh we want to make the story about yeah this 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 uh, Polish Jewish immigrant uh in in the German society it was more like it evolved from scene to scene to this mm. story what I also really appreciated about your film, and we spoke about this in July, is that you really made what I would call a gender bending film. And I think you agree that that um, you created this mystery and like a morality play and there's satire and social commentary and humor in it. And I've honestly never seen a film like this. 
I just delight in this film. I can't explain why. I just do. Do you want to talk about your use of humor and the absurd a little bit, you know, and that yeah. intentionality in this film that could otherwise have some darkness to it, you know? Um, yeah, of course. Um, yeah, black humor is something like for me and Victor. Like this is the this is the way to tell stories because I think uh, in the in this way through black humor you can really, yeah, tell very truthful in a very truthful way and the in the only way like for us because in, in like in this balance between, um, yeah, maybe comic moments, comedy, comedy and 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 tragedy lies like like yeah big truth for us so this was very important from the beginning and yeah because you ask also about absurdity and genre bending when we started like discussing how we want to do it it was clear from the beginning that we want to play with thriller with the genre of thriller because thriller mm -hmm. in itself is a conspiracy theory right so a thriller you go to the cinema and you feel like oh there's like certain um, with music used or like camera angles and you don't you feel uncomfortable you feel that there's something going on so it's like a conspiracy theory in itself so we wanted to play with the genre of thriller and thriller elements because we we are uh, telling a story about the power of fear and how fear is built so we're building this fear with this thriller genre so this was also um important um part of the style yeah uh -huh. nothing abs absurdities or yeah I, I think um it's everything about like making familiar things and familiar trying to tell like a story which set in a shifted reality which seems far away on in first sight but then you realize maybe I don't know but uh, that it has even more to do with your own life or your own experiences as you would wish <laughs> I don't know yeah no, I totally felt that. Um, you know, it's. In, I was thinking about it just this time watching. Was it very intentional to choose two women as your main protagonists? And also, mm -hmm. you didn't reveal that they were Jewish for a long time through the Yiddish. And I was just interested in that because clearly it was important to you that they were Jewish, but we didn't know it till much later in the movie. So gender so, and religion. Yeah. yeah, it started with the girl with Iris. Uh, she line. was there. The, she yeah, and she was there like before Anna but I think it was just intuitive like intuition that that it, it says to be a girl and then her mother like I was interested in, in this in this relationship and um the second question was about being Jewish yeah I didn't want I didn't want to exp yeah I wanted to tell the Jewishness in a very subtle way it was important for me not to um expose it like or make make it um like in german tv uh, jewishness is always portrayed as something exotic oh look oh they are jewish oh okay so everything is about that and it's not like a, in germany it's not like normal <laughs> when you're <laughs> when you're jewish you're not part of the you know main society you're always like oh that the, the these people are jewish so it was important for me to to tell the story and that there's like totally everyday life and and yeah not to yeah to to tell it in a very subtle way this was important for me because it's not what happens to them is not only because they are jewish like it's part of it it's part but not not only like this is this is like a second or a third or fourth layer um yeah that's something I really actually appreciated in the film because there are many films made with a lot of jew you know applying to festivals like ours with Jewish and extra Jewish on top like and I actually really appreciated how subtle this was and we learn you know slowly things emerge like well they were allowed in because they wanted to have some multiculturalism you know and you know that's probably because they were Polish too you know Jewish Polish who knows what um so I found that really fascinating that it was there but that these themes of marginalization and other things are universal themes but also themes one could feel as an outsider in a culture for whichever reason one feels excluded so um the ending was so satisfying of this film when we finally meet Iris and she comes out and then she speaks Polish and then puts the evil eye on everybody or pretends to or that's how her mom translates it and I 
and just seeing that family still wandering, trying to find a home that will accept them. And it made me think, what else is out there in the world? What are they scared of? Like, Natalia, you've created a world. You created this during lockdown. Probably you're filming in COVID. But, you know, I always wonder, what's the world outside there? How many of these are there? Anyway, those are just random thoughts, like yeah. loving the ending and what you created. There, there is not really an answer to that because if we would give an answer, then the film wouldn't work. Because when we, when we give an answer to the fear, uh, then the rational fears and like the main topic of the film would, would, would just not work. And you would understand the house community more when we like tell, oh, there is this, like this, um, this and this reason going on. It's just important that it's really that the danger is real and it's really brutal and dangerous outside and you almost can't survive and you can only survive in this kind of houses like this utopian houses as the house we learned um this was important for us but we realized very early in the writing process that there is no way to explain this outside world without yeah. losing i didn't really want focus. you to i didn't really <laughs> want you to but i appreciated that you conjured the world yeah. Last question, then I want to open it up. That song, that song that they sang, can you remind us of the lyrics? Did you write that or did you find that song? In the, in the um, early song? on, the, what was it? Does anybody remember the lyrics? It was, it was in English. We're safe here. You're safe. Are we safe? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Was this is a real song or something you had written? Yes, no, it was, it was the song which was the credit for the film and uh, not by me by a, a composer Anna Kühlein she she wrote the lyrics and composed uh yeah and uh then the our wonderful actors they yeah they recorded it it was absolutely wonderful Thank um you. let me let me open up does anybody have any questions for Natalia hi can you come up a little closer so she can at least hear you and everybody can hear and I can thank you and if anybody's not comfortable doing that, do not like, please raise your hand. Hi. Can you hear? Okay, yeah. Did you hear that? So just a question right. about your music. Yeah, and that's a Ukrainian actually song, but it's also about brotherhood, but Natalia. Like how we, how we- uh, How you chose how music. How you chose music. So um, the first, like the main um, the choir, like the Carol of the Bells, like as you said, is, is uh, um, based on the composition of a Ukrainian composer. And then the yeah, and maybe you know like this yeah the, this this Christmas song Carol of the Bells and then we just wrote our own lyrics for that in Latin, which oh, is wow. basically about uh, the same like almost the same lyrics like we're safe in here and this is a safe house so um, it was important for us to tell this this the society was which is more like the German. A Christian society and the choir in this house is also important. So we tell it that Iris is supposed to have a choir performance. So the choir had this element of um, that we always hear the house. That's why it was important that we start and end with the choir and that there are like certain sometimes like fragments of choirs in other soundtracks. So this was important. And um, the last choir you hear and the credits, it was just a fantasy language. It's not a real language. So it's just like, and I really ah. love this, this piece. So that there, there are no, you can't really understand it. <laughs> and um, <laughs> yeah, and all the other songs, uh, it just, um, yeah, came by intuition. We just played with different layouts. It was developed in the editing process, the, the, um, the music concept and then we found our amazing uh, composer Maximino who composed this this uh, songs um, there's a Greek song in it um, 
and um, it was important for us that it's Greek because I'm I'm a big fan of uh, the Greek weird wave cinema. So, mm -hmm. um, so every song had like his reason to be there. Um, yeah, and and the soundtrack, uh, the we it was important for us to find like to play with the thriller elements, like, like I, I mentioned before, and uh, this was also the music has like a big part in it, like to 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 make feel the audience uncomfortable or like have the idea that something going on so yeah I hope it answers the question that answered it for me I mean I I think it's interesting that choir was based on the house she was in which is a Christian home I yeah music is always the icing on the cake in a film it's like that final thing um anyway anybody else hi yes yeah as long as we can hear hi Hi, um, thank you for a really fascinating film. I was very intrigued by putting the poet together. Uh, he merged as a character at one point. I realized he's the same person in the basement as the one who was in the elevator. And I, I, you know, I'm curious about that figure, um, poet telling the poetry in the elevator and also doing the creation. Building. Um, what 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 how do you see his role? Oh, could you could you repeat the, yeah. the question? So the question was the poet that we meet in the elevator. Um, we know he's a poet and selling his poems, and then we see that he's living in the basement and doing maintenance work. Can you tell us more about what what his role is in the film to you? Um like a lot of characters they just happen like they just appeared in the writing process and we embraced them and um um victor my co-writer he wrote um uh, wolfram the poet um i think it was important for us to like to, to like about the characters and the the society chooses that they are like accepted in the house what tells it about the society so they accept him so he can he's allowed to live in the basement uh, because it's like such an open uh, society but um actually like the idea for him uh came when because i'm sure in boston it's the same but in berlin like when when you go by train um you um you meet always homeless people who sell newspapers and it's it's always like something like and, and you meet always in this in the train like in this transit place in this public space so we thought about the elevator like an analogy to the to the tube to the metro uh where we like go every day in berlin to go to uh play to go places so um it was like yeah we were like wondering how we can tell this in, in this in our house in our universe and that he's a poet um something like it was just yeah it was intuition that he has to be a poet um there was not like a symbol behind behind it but um and also like to to we were wondering who is like the weakest part in this society and who will be like the first one to i don't know that people will go like um against uh someone who has no allies maybe and is like alone and is is just in German, we have this word dulden, like it's just accepted but not welcomed. You know, it, he's not, he's just there because uh, the society that wants that they are like a society who doesn't throw him away. You know, they they accept him in the elevator. Like this, is some I don't know, but I hope that answers it. Thank you. There's another. Hi. Yes. Um, just so just so she can hear, if possible. Yeah. Can you hear me? She's on the she's on the computer. Oh. Sorry, do you mind just coming a little closer? Uh, Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, I know it's a big thing to move. Hi. So I'm just curious about the whole idea of the evil eye and that Iris has this the evil eye. I think of the evil eye as something from old Yiddish, Eastern European Jewish stories, but I am ignorant of whether it is it, it's it's part of a bigger cultural thing in Eastern Europe that I just don't know. Me too. Great question. Did you hear that, Natalia? Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, Everybody thank you heard? Yeah. Um it's a really good question. Uh 
I um I think the evil eye for us was something very like which, which appears in every culture in in a different way. Uh, we came up uh, with the evil eye because we read a short story and there was, but it, the short story was not really a, a specific Eastern European, um, and we just yeah it was fascinating to um, because at first in the writing process there were this um, brutal fantasies of Iris. And then the evil eyes. So first it was like this fact that she fantasized that bad things will happen to others. And then we realized that there has to be a reason. So then we came up with the evil eye as an explanation for her, yeah, for her fantasies or her also her the reason why she locks herself up in the bathroom. So um I still I don't know enough about the evil eye, but I like it that it's still also for me isn't like a mystery. And um, there are so many different, um, yeah, different stories and fairy tales and mythologies about this evil eye. I like, I know in, in, in for example, in, in uh, I think in, in Turkey, you can buy a lot of, or, or also like not only Turkey, like you can, you can also protect yourself against the evil eye with a special, uh, yeah, um, you wear some like a bracelets and, and necklaces and and so and on. Also... Yeah, and in Greece too, right? We I want to have one of those. Yeah, they're pretty. Yeah, Natalia. First, I'm just so if you were interviewing me at 4:30 in the morning, I would be nowhere as articulate as you are. I'm kind <laughs> of blown away. Um, Wes, how much time do we have? I'm sorry, I lost track of time. One more question. One more question. Is there one more question? Yes. Hi, uh, thanks so much for being with us and uh, greetings from Boston. Um, so I just wanted to ask you a little bit about this um, sort of housing arrangement that was the setting for the film. And, you know, that's something that's not, I don't know, it, it's not something that's common here. <laughs> but I was just wondering whether that's, there's anything, I mean, I know you sort of created, had this sort of setting for the film, sort of microcosm, but I was wondering whether that sort of arrangement is, is a, uh, Common in Germany, maybe you could talk a little bit about uh, that the, the building and, and uh, all, all together. And they had, you know, this uh, this council that would you know, admit people. I was, I, was, I was wondering whether that is, is something that's sort of a, a phenomenon there at all. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you for the question. Um, <laughs> Um, this is, of course, a bit like a fantasy place. So there, of course, there are high-rise buildings, and I uh, myself lived in high-rise buildings, and that's why we decided to tell a story in one. But it was important for us to make it in a very utopian way, like a place where everyone wants to go, and that's why the, um, yeah, they have to apply. That's why, like, the process of getting an apartment in this house is so difficult because there like outside is so dangerous and inside is like the only way to to be safe that's why uh we yeah we yeah we picture it and we tell it in the way we did um but of course like i think when you see and i'm sure it's also in america there there are sometimes like this gated community um places mm -hmm. where where um it's like they're protected very well uh, where more like the richer people live and um for I was once in um in Mexico in um in the capital and there was also like this phenomenon with the skated community when you just like step outside and there's like a complete out different world from 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 inside and you realize like how close these worlds are. So the gated community idea was something we talked a lot about with my production designer and um, yeah, and you know, like we have a very had a very low low budget and had to shoot it during COVID. So um, we had to find places which already like had this atmosphere. We couldn't like afford to build them, uh, but um, the, in the same time, there is not this house. That so it's 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 um, like it's twenty two places <laughs> edited together, oh and what? there's. Wow. There is no like there is a bureaucracy, a governmental building in the suburbs of Berlin, which is like four story high. But uh, there is from everything you see from outside is um, visual effects is done by our amazing um, computer artist, uh, visual effect artist. Um, so 
and the forest is somewhere else and the golf court is somewhere else and the and the um uh swimming pool is somewhere like everything is somewhere else uh because we 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 had this we had this house so like uh, lively in our in our um minds but we couldn't afford to like there was like a hotel in Romania for example which looked exactly <laughs> as we wanted but we had no money so we had to I don't know some kind of do the film magic to find this place which is actually not exists but we build it yeah but I think maybe like the German thing about it is maybe the the you know the bureaucracy of like coming in and not uh, that it has happened like in my house not at all but just when you apply for an apartment, like it's very hard now to get an apartment in Berlin or, uh, but I'm sure like it's same in Paris and London and New York, like it's very hard to, to get, to find an apartment. And then you have to prove that you all, oh, you have you no know, debt and you have like this and that, and yeah. you're really good. So uh, it, it's not, it's maybe, it's more your documents, not like you have like an exam or something, but it's still like a very bureaucratic process. Also like, we also thought a lot about like, Europe as a as a place where people decide who can come to Europe and who's who leaves like um apart like in in 2015 there was the so-called refugee crisis in Germany uh and um that there why when the the right wing parties becoming like became stronger and stronger after like um 2015 lots of refugees from Syria came to Germany so this is something like just very like dangerous to see how how the the right wing party is becoming hard like strong and strong now in Germany I mean like we're talking about Germany it's insane but uh, it's it's um, people like um, it's becoming more and more anti-semitic you know and racist and this is something that we're afraid of and also wanted also to tell the story about this world where someone decides who is allowed to belong and who is like uh, um yeah kept outside so i think this is to give you the overall why why this place and what what is about um thank you natalia i have to thank you also for that question because wow of an answer right now um just two very quick things i want to like compliment everything about this film including the acting uh cinematography obviously writing directing also, just to share what you told me in July, that most of the positions, the lead positions on this film were students. This was a student film and you all worked on each other's films. So it's just another wow for me. Um, Thank you. Anyway, I'm so sorry we have to say goodbye. I know there are more questions. I have more for you, but thank you for being with us in the middle of the night. Yeah. Thank you so much for like coming, watching the film. It means really a lot that you can connect so well and you, were, you decided that it's worth showing at the festival so yeah thank you thank you have a good sleep natalia thank you everyone for being here <laughs> thank you so much have a good night so you are, have your night before you yeah, we have our night <laughs> have a good rest of your sleep and day tomorrow thank, thank you. you cheers